Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at chlorine and its compounds. So previously we looked at the preparation of chlorine. So today we are going to be focusing on some properties of chlorine. Let's use chlorine has very varied properties and so we will break down this session into two sessions because of the vastness of these reactions. So make sure you pay close attention to how chlorine is behaving. We have been looking at different compounds that have oxidizing and reducing properties and look at the specific way these reactions occur. So some of the properties or physical properties of chlorine is that it's very poisonous. It's a green yellow gas with an irritating pungent smell. So you notice most of the gases are irritating because of their acidic properties, most of them that are acidic. So it attacks the nose and the lungs. It's 2.5 times denser than air. So that's the reason why it's collected by downward delivery or upward displacement of air. It's very soluble in water. So it formed a green yellow chlorine water. We mentioned this when we were looking at halogens in form 2. So we said that when chlorine reacts with water, it forms hypochlorous acid and hydrochloric acid. This is the one that forms the yellow green yellow solution. And then uh we said, of course, it's composed with those two acids. Later on, we'll discuss what happens to these two acids. But for now, we'll leave it at that because the hypochlorous acid also dissociates in presence of sunlight. Uh, so if you were to use a litmus paper on chlorine, uh, this litmus paper needs to be moist or the gas needs to be moist. It would turn a uh, blue litmus paper to red and then it would get bleached, as you can see on the image so what happens is dry chlorine uh, turns blue litmus paper red and then bleaches it and then red litmus paper will just be bleached it's not going to turn because it remains red because it's acidic in nature so dry chlorine has no effect on dry litmus paper but in the presence of moisture chlorine forms chlorine water so chlorine water, remember, is a mixture of hydrochloric acid and hypochlorous acid. So the hypochlorous acid in the chlorine water is an oxidizing agent. So it adds or oxidizes to the color of most dyes, thus bleaching it. So if you look at the step by step, is chlorine reacting with water to form hydrochloric acid and hypochlorous acid. And then the hypochlorous acid gives out this, gives up the ox oxygen, nascent oxygen. So it reacts with the dye to form hydrochloric acid and a colorless material. So you can see this oxidation is, uh, this uh, bleaching is by oxidation. Unlike the one that happened with um, sulfur four oxide, which was by reduction, this one is more permanent. So the moment that substance is bleached, that's it, doesn't go back to its original color. Unlike for sulfur four oxide, which is the, when the substance is oxidized later on by exposure, it can go back into its color. So the bleaching action, so moist chlorine bleaches dyes, but not printer ink, which is made of carbon. So the color change is due to the oxidation by hypochlorous acid, as we have said. So chlorine reacts with water to form hydrochloric acid and hypochlorous acid. And then the hypochlorous acid dissociates or gives up its oxygen atom to the dye, which reacts with the dye to form a colorless matter. And then hydrochloric uh, acid is formed. So some of the chemical properties of chlorine is it reacts with metals uh, to form metal chloride. An example is iron 3 chloride. So you can see in the setup, it's usually done in the fume chamber because you know chlorine is very poisonous. So it's very harmful to the body. So in this setup, we pass dry chlorine. We don't want to use wet. So dry chlorine is passed through 
uh, heated iron filings, and then a reaction occurs to form a three chloride, which is collected at the cooler parts of the tube. You can see how it is set up, and then a guard is also put with calcium oxide. You are going to see the purpose of this later on. So chlorine gas has to be dried uh, before the reaction occurs. So this is this helps to prevent hydration as oxidation of the ion, which can form hydrated R3 oxide, which prevents the reaction from not occurring. So we do not want that to happen. So we dry it first. So you can see why we are drying the chlorine first. An ion metal must be hot, and this is done by heating so that it can introduce activation energy. We're going to discuss about this activation energy when we get to form 4. So this is the energy that is required so that the reactant can form products. So there are some reactions that need the activation energy, some do not need that activation energy. So, and then the anhydrous calcium chloride in the YouTube is to dry the chlorine gas. And then also we know there is some a drying agent uh, in the tube here. Uh, this drying agent prevents the atmospheric vapor from getting into the apparatus. So we, we can use calcium oxide. It's used in this guard tube. So this is just to prevent now the moisture from not getting inside. So some of the observations you notice from this reaction is that the metal usually glows red hot and then red brown fumes of iron 3 chloride are formed in the combustion tube which later on are deposited after it cools down to form a black solid of iron 3 chloride. So iron 3 chloride cannot be easily collected in the combustion tube because it's sublime. So it's a sublime. So when it sublimes, it comes and deposits as a sublimate at the cooler parts of the flask. So this is the equation, ion reacts with chlorine to form iron 3 chloride. So in conclusion, iron 3 chloride sublimes on heating to form a black solid, uh, which changes to red fumes on heating, as you can see from the equation. And the same thing is used for the reaction of also aluminium chloride. So aluminium chloride can react with uh, chlorine to form, al this is supposed to be aluminium, three chloride. And it can also react with chlorine to form the dimer. So aluminium chloride also sublimes. So it, when you heat it, it forms white fumes, which can cool back to form the solid. So it also reacts with the magnesium. So if you lower a burning magnesium in a gas jar containing chlorine, it's going to burn brightly. You know magnesium produces a lot of heat. So it burns brightly and forms white fumes. So you're going to see some white fumes uh, in the uh, apparator. So these white fumes are for magnesium chloride, which cools into a white powder. So unlike the aluminium chloride, iron I3 chloride, magnesium chloride is not a sublime, does not sublime. So chlorine reacts with most metal to form their corresponding chlorides. So in the cases where we form two chlorides, for example, iron can form iron 2 chloride and iron 3 chloride. The one that has the highest oxidation is the one that is formed. So if it's iron 2 and iron 3, the iron 3 chloride is the one that is going to be formed. So this is because the higher chloride is more stable. Uh, so this is the reason why when uh, chlorine reacts with iron, it forms iron 3 chloride, but not iron 2 chloride. It also reacts with nonmetal when it reacts with nonmetal or molecular compounds. For example, phosphorus. So if you take phosphorus and lower it uh, in chlorine, this is in the case where you burn the we warm the phosphorus first and then you lower it, it continues to burn or we say it smolders and ignites spontaneously and then it produces white fumes of, of phosphorus chloride. Uh, this is phosphorus. It forms phosphorus 3 chloride and phosphorus 5 chloride. So chlorine reacts with dry phosphorus to form white fumes of phosphorus 3 and phosphorus 5 chloride, as you can see from the equation. So phosphorus 3 chloride, as we said, um, 
it, it happens when there is limited amount of chlorine. With phosphorus 5, it's when we have excess uh, chlorine. It also reacts with hydrogen in presence of light. Um, so when it, that happens, um, it's done in a fume chamber. Remember, reaction is very, very explosive. So when the chlorine gas is mixed with hydrogen and the mixture is heated uh, or exposed to direct light, uh, then aqueous ammonia brought near the mouth of the jar, you're going to see some white fumes. And the moment you see white fumes, it tells you that hydrochloric um, gas is being formed. So chlorine reacts with hydrogen to form hydrochloric gas. You notice you're going to talk about this later on when we do the large scale preparation of hydrogen chloride gas. So the hydrogen chloride is the one that goes upwards and reacts with ammonia at the mouth of the test tube to form ammonium chloride, which are now the white fumes. So let's do one question and conclude the session. So in an experiment, dry chlorine gas was reacted with aluminium as shown in the diagram below. So you can see the chlorine, aluminium and calcium chloride. So substance A, we are going to call it aluminium. Three chloride. Write an equation for the reaction that took place in the, in the combustion. So we have aluminium solid reacting with chlorine gas to form aluminium. 3 chloride. So we put a 3 here and a 2 and a 3. So that's it for this session. So you'll see in the next lesson as we look at other properties of chlorine.